Good evening. We, the Zoom players hailing from such lands as New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, present to you William Shakespeare's The Tempest. Act one, scene one. On a ship at sea, a tempestuous noise of thunder and lightning heard. Enter a master and a boatswain. Boatswain. Here, master, what cheer? Good, speak to the mariners. Fall to it yearly, or we run ourselves aground. Bestir, bestir. Exit, enter mariners. Hey ho, my hearts, cheerily, cheerily, my hearts. Yeah, yeah, take in the top sail. Tend to the master's whistle. Blow till thou burst thy winds, if room enough. Enter Alonzo, Sebastian, Antonio, Ferdinand, Gonzalo, and others. Good boatswain, have care. Where's the master? Play the man. I pray now, keep below. Where is the master, boatswain? Do you not hear him? You mar our labor, keep our cabins. You do assist the storm. May good, be patient. When the sea is, hence, what cares these wars for the name of the king? To cabin, silence, trouble us not. Good, yet remember whom thou hast abroad. Oh, uh, wait, I'm sure. Uh, sorry. Did I skip none that None that I more love. Uh, okay. <laughs> None that I more love than myself. You are a counselor. If you can command these elements to silence and work the peace of the present, we will not hand a rope more. Use the authority if you cannot. Give thanks you have lived so long and make yourself ready for your cabin for the mischance of the hour. If it so hap, cheerily, good hearts, out of our way, I say. Exit. I have great comfort from this fellow. Methinks he has no drowning mark upon him. His complexion is perfect gallows. Send fast, good fate, to, uh, to his hanging. Make the rope of his destiny our cable for our own doth little advantage. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Exunt, re-enter boatswain. Down with the top mast, yeah, lower, lower. Bring her to, the, to try with main course. A cry within. A plague upon this howling. They are louder than the weather of our office. Re-enter Sebastian, Antonio, and Gonzalo. Yet again, what do you, what do you hear? Shall we give o'er and drown? Mind you, ha a mind, have you a mind to sink? A pox of your throat, you bawling, blasphemous, and charitable dog. Work you then. Hang her. Hang you, horse, on insolent noisemaker. We are less afraid to be drowned than thou art. I'll warrant him for drowning, though the ship were no stronger than a nutshell and as leaky as an unstaunched wrench. Wench. Lay her a hold, a hold. Set her two courses off to sea again. Lay her off. Enter mariners, wet. All lost to prayers, to prayers, all lost! What must our mouths be cold? The king and prince at prayers. Let's assist them, for our case is, a, is as theirs. I'm out of patience. We are merely cheated of our lives by drunkards. This wide-chapped rascal, wouldst thou mightest lie drowning the washing of ten tides? He'll be hanged yet though every drop of water swear against it, and agape at widest to glut him. The confused noise within, mercy on us, we split, we split. Farewell, my wife and children, farewell, brother. We split, we split, we split. Let us all sink with the king. Let's take leave of him. Exunt Antonio and Sebastian. Now I would give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground, long health, brown, Furs, anything, the will above be done, but I would fain die a dry death. Exunt. Scene two, the island before Prospero's cell. Enter Prospero and Miranda. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this war, allay them. 
The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, but, this, but that the sea mounting to the welkin's cheek dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer a brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her dashed all to pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perished. Had I, been, had I been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth or ere it should the good ship to have swallowed and the frauding souls within her. Be collected. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. Oh, woe the day. No harm. I have done nothing but in the care of thee. Of thee, my dear one. Thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am better than Prospero, master of a cool, poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know, did never meddle with my thoughts. <sighs> Tis time I should inform thee, father. Uh, uh, lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me. Lays down his mantle. Lie, thou art. Wipe thou thine eyes. Have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wreck, which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have with such provision in mine art, so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as an hair, be did to any creature in the ve vessel, which thou heardst cry, which thou sawst sink. Sit down, for thou must now know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding, stay, not yet. The hours now come. The very minute bids thee ope thine ear. Now obey and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do not think thou canst. For then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. <laughs> By what? By any other house or person? Uh, of any thing the image tell me thou hast kept with thine remembrance. Tis far off, and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants, had I not four or five women once that tended me? <laughs> oh, thou hadst, and more, Miranda. How is it that this lives in thy mind? It, what, what sees thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time? If thou canst remember aught ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayst. But that I do not. Twelve years since Miranda, twelve years since, the father was the Duke of Milan and a prince of power. Sir, are you not my father? Well, thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said thou was my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and thou his only heir and princess no worse issued. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we that we came from thence? Or blessed was we did? Both. Both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved thence but blessedly hope hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the teen that I had turned to you, which is from my remembrance, please, you farther. <sighs> my brother and thy uncle called Antonio, I pray thee mark me that a brother should be so perfidious. He who next to my, thyself of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state, as at that time to all the signories it was the first, and Prospero the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity and for the liberal arts without a parallel. Those being all my study, the, the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false uncle thus Dost thou attend me? Sir, most heedfully. 
Bean once perfected how to grant suits, how to deny them, who to advance and who to trash for overtopping. New created the creatures that were mine. I say, or changed them, or new else formed them. Having both the key of officer and office set all the hearts in the state to what to he pleased his ear. And that he was the very ivy which had hid my princely trunk and sucked my virtue out on it. Thou attends not. Oh, good sir, I do. Now I pray thee, mark me. I, thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind with that which by being so retired or prized or popular rate. In my false brother awake an evil nature and my trust like a good parent to be dead of him a falsehood in its contrary as great as, as my trust was, which indeed had no limit. A confidence sands bound. He being thus lorded, not only with what revenue he yielded, but with what my power might else exact, like one who having into truth by telling of it, may such a sinner of his memory to credit his own lie. He did believe he was indeed the Duke, out of the substitution executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing, Dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, would cure deafness. <sighs> to have no screen between this part he played and him he played it for, he needs will be absolute Milan. I mean, poor man, my library was duked him large enough. Of temporal royalties, he thinks me now incapable. Confederate so dry was he for sway with the King of Naples, to, to, to give him annual tribute, do him homage, and subject his coronet to his crown, and bend the dukedom yet unbowed. Alas, poor Milan, to most ignoble stooping. Oh, the heavens! Mark his condition and the event, then tell me if this might be a brother. I should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have borne bad sons. Now, the condition. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate uh, me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair Milan with all the honors on my brother, whereon a treacherous army levied. One midnight, fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. Alack, for pity, I, not remembering how I cried out then, will cry it o'er again. It is, it is a hint that brings mine eyes to it. And I hear a little farther, and then I'll bring thee to thee to the present business, which now is upon without the which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? <laughs> yeah, well, demanded wench, my tale provokes that question. Dear, they durst not. So dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colors fair painted their foul ends. In few, they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to the sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quit it. There they hoist us, to cry to the sea that roared to us, the sigh to the winds who pity, sighing back again, did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? <laughs> Cherubin, thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile and fuse with a, a, a fortitude from heaven. When I had decked the sea with drops of full salt under my burthened groan, 
which raised me an undergoing stomach to bear up against which should ensue. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a, a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of her charity, being then appointed master of this design, did give us with, with rich garments, linen stuffs and necessaries, which since have stead us much so. Of her gentleness, knowing that I love my books, furnished me my own library with volumes that I, that I prize above my dukedom. Would I might but ever see that man? Now I arise. Sit Zoom still and, and hear the mm, sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrow. Uh, here in this island we arrived, and here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princesses can have more time for, for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. Heavens, thank you for it. And now I pray you, sir, for still tis beating in my mind your reason for raising this sea storm. No, this far forth. By accident, most strange, bountiful fortune. Now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore. And by my prescience, I find my zenith doth depend upon a, a most auspicious star whose influence, if now I court not, but omit, my fortunes will ever after droop. Now, here, cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Miranda sleeps. Come away, servant. Come. I am ready now. Approach my Ariel, come. Enter Ariel. All hail, great master, grave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel and all his quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed the point, the tempest that I bade thee? To every article, I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometimes I'll divide and burn in many places. On the top masts, the yards and bowsprit would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning were not the fires and cracks of sulfurous roaring the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake. Ah, oh, my brave spirit. Uh, who was so firm, so, so constant that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel, then all afire with me, the king's son, Ferdinand. With hair upstaring, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, hell is empty and all the devils are here. Why, that's the spirit. But was not this nigh shore? Close by, my master. But are they, Ariel, safe? not a hair perished on their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou badest me in troops, I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son I have landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the isle and sitting his arms in this sad knot. Mm, of the king's ship, the mariners say, how thou hast disposed and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou calledst me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed Bermouths, there she's hid, the mariners all under hatches stowed, who with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they have all met again and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing that they saw the king shipwrecked and his great person perish. Ah, uh, Ariel. Thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. Mm, at least two glasses. 
Uh, the time to sit and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now, Moody? What is it thou canst demand? My liberty. Uh, before the time is out? <laughs> oh, no more. I pray thee remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistakings, served without or grudge or grumblings, thou didst promise to bait me a full year. And dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and thinks it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Uh, born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Argier. Oh. Was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgot. This damned witch, Sycorax, for mistress manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing, from Argier thou knowst was banished. For one thing she did that they would not take her life. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant, and for thou was a spirit too delicate to act her earthly and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hess. Hm, she did find thee by help of her more potent ministers, and in her mitical, unmitigable rage into a cloven pile, pine, within which rift, within which rift Imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there, where thou dost did vent thy groans as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island save for the sun that she did litter here, a freckled well help, help hag born, not honored with a human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. A dull thing. I say he that Caliban, whom now I keep in service, thou best knowst what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breast of every anger bear. It was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that may get the pine and let thee out. Thank thee, master. If thou more murmurs, I will rend an oak and peg thee there in his knotty entrail to thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so. And after two days, I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go, make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Or go take the shape and hither come to it. Go, hence with diligence. Exit, Ariel. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Oh, shake it off. Well, come on, we'll, we'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir, I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch our in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. What ho, slave Caliban! Thou earth, thou speak. There's wood enough within. Come forth, I say. There's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise. When? 
Re-enter Ariel like a water nymph. Fine apparition, my quaint Ariel, hearken thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Exit. Thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam, come forth. Enter Caliban. As wicked do is e'er my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwelsome, from unwholesome fen, drop on you both the southwest wind on ye and blister you all o'er. Oh, for this, be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath. Urchins shall for the vast of the night that they may work all excise on, exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, every pinch more singing than bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. This island's mine by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me and madest much of me. Wouldst give me water with berries in it and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee and showed thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs, brine pits, barren place and fertile. Test be I that did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you, for I am all the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king. And here you sty me in this hard rock, whilst you do keep me from the rest of the island. Oh, thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee filth as thou art with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, <laughs> till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. No, <laughs> would it had been done. Thou didst prevent me. I had peopled else this isle with Calibans. Abhorred slave, which any print of goodness wilt not take, being capable of all ill, I pity thee. Took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other. When thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but wouldst gobble like a, a thing more brutish, I endow thy purposes with words that made them known. But thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had that in it which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who has most deserved more than a prison. Ooh, you taught me language, and my profit on it says I know how to curse. The red plague rid you for learning me your language. Thou oh, hag seed hence. Fetch us in fuel and be quick. Thou art best to answer other business. Shrugs thy, mal thy malice, thou neglect'st, or thou dost unwillingly what I command. I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, and make thee roar that beast shall tremble at all thy thing. No, pray thee! Sorry. I must obey. His art is of such power it would control my damn's god Setabos and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. Exit Caliban. Re-enter Ariel, invisible, playing and singing. Ferdinand following Ariel's song. Come unto these yellow sands and then take hands. Curtsies when you have and kissed the wild waves whist, put it feedly here and there, and sweet sprites the burthen bear. Hark, hark. Burthen dispersedly within. The watchdogs bark. Burthen, bow wow. Hark, hark, I hear the strain of a strutting chanticleer. Cry, cock a diddle doo. Where should this music be? In the air or the earth? It sounds no more. And sure, it waits upon some god of the island, sitting on a bank, weeping again. The king, my father's wreck. This music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both the fury and my passion with its sweet air. 
since I had followed it, or, or hath it drawn me, rather, but tis gone. No, it be begins again. Ariel sings. Full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange, sea nymphs hourly ring his knell. Burthen ding dong. Hark now, I hear them. Ding dong bell. The ditty does remind me of my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I, I hear it now above me. The fringe curtains of thine eye advance, and say what thou seest yon. What is it? A, a spirit? Lord, how it looks about, believe me, sir, it carries a brave form, but tis a spirit. <laughs> no, wench. It eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck, and, but he something stained with grief, thy, that beauty's canker, thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. Aside. Ah, it goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure. The goddess on whom these ears attend, vouchsafe my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island and that you will good, some good instruction give how I may bear thee here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce is, oh, you wonder if you be made or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens, I am the best of them that speak this speech, were I but where tis spoken. How? The best? What were thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing, as I am now, that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me. And that he does, and that he does, I weep. Myself am Naples, who with mine eye never since at ebb beheld the king my father wrecked. Alack for mercy! Yes. Faith in all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. Aside. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee if now it were fit to do it. At the first sight, they have changed eyes. Ooh, delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. To Ferdinand. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw, the first that e'er I sighed for. Pity move my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Uh, uh, soft, sir. One more word. Aside. They are both in either's powers, but this swift business I must uneasy make lest too light winning make the prize light. To Ferdinand. Uh, one more word. I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost hear usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy, to win it from me, the Lord on it. No, as I am a man. There is nothing ill can dwell in such a temple if the ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to do well with it. Uh, follow me. Speak not you for him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots and husk wear in the acorn cradle. Follow. No, no, I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Draws and is charmed from moving. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What? I say my foot, my tutor? 
Put up thy sword, traitor, who makes a show but dares not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, father. Hands, hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity. I'll be his surety. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What, an advocate for an imposter? Hush, thou thinkst there is no such, more such shapes as he, having seen but him in Caliban? That foolish wench. To most of the men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a godlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigor in them. Huh. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued are but light to me. Might I, but through my prison once a day, behold this maid? All corners else the earth let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such a prison. Aside. Ah, it works. To Ferdinand. Come on, that has done well, fine Ariel. To Ferdinand. Follow me. To Ariel. Hark, what does thou else shall do me? Be of comfort. My father's of a better nature, sir, than he appeared by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from him. Thou shalt be free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow. Speak not for him. Exeunt. Act two, scene one, another part of the island. Enter Alonzo, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Adrian, Francisco, and others. Beseech you, sir, be merry. You have cause, so have we all, of joy. For our escape is much beyond our loss. Our hint of woe is common. Every day some sailor's wife, the master of some merchant, and the merchant have just our theme of woe. But for a miracle, I mean our preservation, few in millions can speak like us. And wisely, good sir, weigh our sorrows with our comfort. Pretty peace. <laughs> he receives comfort like cold porridge. The visitor will not give him or so. Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. By and by it will strike. Sir. One. Tell. When every grief is entertained that's offered comes to the entertainer. A dollar. Dollar comes to him indeed. You've spoken truer than you purposed. Dolor. You, you have taken it wiselier than I meant you should. Therefore, my lord. Fie, what a spendthrift is he of his tongue. I prithee, spare. Well, I've done. But yet I. We'll be talking. Which of he or Adrian, for a good wager, first begins to crow? The old cock. The cockerel. Done. The wager? A laughter? <laughs> A match. Sorry, my internet cut out. Though this island seems to be a desert. Nick? Sebastian. So you're paid. So <laughs> uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yet. Yet. He could not miss it. It must needs be of subtle, tender and delicate temperance. Temperance, temperance was a delicate wench. I and the subtle as he most learnedly delivered. I and the subtle as he most learnedly delivered. Or the air breathes upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and rotten ones. Or as twere perfumed by a fen. 
Here is everything advantageous to life. True, save means to live. Of that there's none, or little. How lush and lusty the grass looks. How green. The ground is indeed tawny. With an eye of green in it. He misses not much. No, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it is, which is indeed almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. That our garments, being as they were, drenched in the sea, hold not withstanding their freshness and glosses, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. If but one of his pockets could speak, would it not say he lies? Ah, you're very falsely pocket up his report. Methinks my garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first in Africa, as the marriage of the king's first daughter to Clarabelle to the king of Tunis. It was a sweet marriage, and we prosper well in our return. Tunis was never graced before with such a paragon to their queen. Not since widow Dido's time. The widow, a pox on that. How came that widow in? Uh, how came that widow in? Widow Dido. What if he had said widower Aeneas too? <laughs> Good Lord, how you take it? <laughs> widow Ditto said you. <laughs> you make me study of that. She was of Carthage, not of Tina Tunis. This Tunis, sir, was Carthage. Carthage. I assure you, Carthage. His word is more than the miraculous harp. He hath raised the wall and houses too. What impossible matter will he take, will he make essay next? I think he will carry this island home in his pocket and give it his son for an apple. And sowing the kernels of it in the sea bring forth more islands. Aye. Why, in good time. Sir, we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when they were at Tunis at the marriage of your daughter, who is now queen. And the rarest that e'er came there. Bade, I beseech you, Widow Dido. Oh, Widow Dido, I Widow Dido. Is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as the first day? I wore it, I, I mean, in a sort? That sort we was well fished for. When I wore it to your daughter's marriage. <laughs> you cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my, of my sins. Would I had never married my daughter there, for coming since my son is lost, and in my rate she too, who is far from Italy removed, I ne'er see again shall I see her. Thou mine heir of Naples and of Milan, that strange fifth head fish had made his meal on thee. Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him, and ride upon their backs, he trod the water, whose enmity he flung aside, and breasted the surge most swollen that met him. His bold head above the contentious waves he kept, and oared himself with his good arms and lusty stroke to the shore, that o'er his wave-worn bases bowed, as stooping to relieve him. I do not doubt he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss that would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather loose her to an African, where she at least is banished from your eye, who hath cause to wet the grief on. Prithee, peace. You were kneeled to and importuned otherwise by all of us, and the fair soul herself weighed between loathness and obedience, at which end of the beam should bow. We have lost your son, I fear, forever. Milan and Naples have more widows in them of this business making than we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own. So is the dearest. Oh, the loss. My Lord Sebastian, the truth you speak does lack some gentleness and time to speak it in. You, you rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. Very well. And most chirurgically. It is foul weather in us all, good sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I plantation of this isle, my lord? He'd held uh, south the needle seed. Or docks or mallows. And were the king aunt, what would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. 
In the commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit, no name of magistrate. Letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and, and the use of service. None contract succession born, bound of land, tilth, vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil, no occupation. All men idle, all. And women too, but innocent and pure, not sovereignty. Yet he would be king on The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, and need of any engine would I not have. But nature should bring forth of its own kind, all foison, all abundance to feed my innocent people. No marrying among its subjects? None, man. All idle, whores and knaves. I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. And do you mark me, sir? Really, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe your highness, and did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen who, have are, who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. Twas you we laughed at. Who in this kind of merry fooling am nothing to you? So you may continue and laugh at nothing still. What a blow was there given. And it had not fallen flat long. You are gentlemen of brave metal who would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue it in five weeks without changing. Each direction. Each inter aerial invisible playing solemn music. We would so and then go a bat fouling. <laughs> Nay, good my lord, be not angry. No, I warrant you, I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Will, will you laugh at me asleep? For I am very heavy. Go sleep and hear us. All sleep except Alonzo, Sebastian, and Antonio. What? All so soon asleep? I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not omit the heavy, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow. When it doth, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, we uh, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you. Wondrous heavy. Alonzo sleeps. Exit Ariel. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. What might, what might, worthy Sebastian? Or, or what might? No more. And yet, methinks, I see it in thy face. What thou shouldst be, the occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What, art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speaks out of thy sleep. What is it thou didst say? This is a strange repose to be asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lets thy fortune sleep. Die, rather, winks uh, while thou art waking. Whilst thou art waking. More distinctly. There's meaning in thy snores. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too, if heed me, which to do troubles the oar. Well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so. To ebb hereditary sloth instructs me. Oh, if you but knew how you, propose, uh, how you the purpose cherish, while thus you mock it, how in stripping it you more invest it. Ebbing men indeed most often do so near the bottom run by their own fear or sloth. Prithee, say on, the setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter from thee. 
and a birth indeed, which throws thee much to yield. Thus, sir, although this lord of weak remembrance this, who shall be of as little memory when he is earth, hath here almost persuade, for he's a spirit of persuasion only professes to persuade, the king his son's alive. Tis as impossible that he undrowned as he, as that as he that sleeps here swims. I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? No hope that way is another way so high a hope, that even ambition cannot perceive a wink beyond, but doubt discovery there. Wilt thou grant me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who is the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis, she that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life, she that from Naples can have no note unless the sun were post, the man in the moon's too slow, till newborn chins be rough and, ra uh, and razorable, she that from whom? We all were sea swallowed, though some cast again, and by that destiny perform an, to perform an act whereof, What's past is prologue, what to come, in yours and my discharge. What stuff is this? How say you? Tis true, my brother's daughter's queen of Tunis, so is she heir of Naples, twixt which regions there is some space. Uh, a space whose every cubit seems to cry out, how shall that Clarabelle measure us back to Naples? Keep in Tunis and let Sebastian wake. Say, this were death that now hath seized him. Why, they were no worse than they are than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. Lords that can prate and amply uh, as amply and unnecessarily as this Gonzalo. I myself could make a cough of as deep as that. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep were this for you, for your advancement. Do you understand me? He thinks I do. And how does your content, uh, and how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True, and look how well my garments sit upon me. Much feeter than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But for your conscience. Aye, sir, where lies that? If t'were a kaib, t'would put me to my slipper. But I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences that stand twixt me and Milan, candied be they and melt ere they molest. Here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like, that's dead, whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever, whilst you, doing thus, to the potential wink for an eye might put this ancient mor mor morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not abrade our course. For all the rest, they'll take the suggestion as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock as many, uh, they'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou goddest Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together, and when I rear my head, do you the like to uh, to fall it on Gonzalo? Oh, but one word. They talk apart. Re-enter Ariel, invisible. My master, through his art, foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and sends me forth, for else his project dies, to keep them living. Sings in Gonzalo's ear. While you here do snoring lie, open-eyed conspiracy, his time doth take, 
If of life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake, awake. Then let us both be sudden. Gonzalo? I said awake! They awake. Why, how now? Ho, oh, awake? Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? Hannah? You guys have to tell me sooner. I said my whole line. <laughs> now, good angels, preserve the king. I said that one. And now I'll say the other one. What's the matter? <laughs> Whilst we stood here securing your repose, even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like bulls or rather lions. Did not wake you? It struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Oh, it was a dint to fright a monster's ear to make an earthquake. Sure, it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon my honor, sir, I heard a humming. And that a strange one, too, which should wake me. I shaked you, sir, and, and cried, and mine eyes opened. I saw their weapons drawn. There, there was a noise that verily tis, tis best we stand our guard, or that we will quit this place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this place, and let's make further search for my poor son. Heavens, keep him from those beasts, for he is, sure, in the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy son. Exeunt. Scene two. Another part of the island. Enter Caliban with a burden of wood, a noise of thunder heard. All the infections that sun sucks up from bogs, fens, flats, are prosperful make him by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse, but they'll nor pinch, fright me with urchin, show, pitch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he bid him. But for every trifle they are set upon me, Sometime like apes that mow and chatter at me and after bite me, then like hedgehogs which lie tumbling in my barefoot way and mount their pricks at my footfall. Sometimes am I all wound up with adders who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Enter Trinculo. Lo, now, lo, here comes a spirit of his and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll fall flat, perchance he will not mind me. Here's neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. And another storm brewing? <sighs> I hear it sing in the wind. Yond same black cloud, yond huge one, looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose but befall its painful. And have we here a man or a fish, dead or alive? A fish. He smells like a fish, a very ancient fish-like smell, a kind of, not of the newest poor John, a strange fish, were I in England now as I once was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fool there, but would give a piece of silver. <laughs> there would be this monster make of a man, any strange beast there makes a man. <laughs> when they will not give a doit to relieve a lame beggar, they will lazy out ten to see a dead Indian, legged like this man, and fins like arms. <laughs> Warm on my troth. Now, I do now let loose my opinion. Hold it in longer. Tis not a fish, but an islander that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt. 
Alas, the storm has come again. My best is to wait, creep under this garbage inch. There is no other shelter hereabouts. Oh, Mrs. Acquaintance, a man with strange bedfellows. I will hear a shroud till the dreads of the storm have be passed. Enter Stefano, singing a bottle in his hand. Thou no more to see, to see, here shall I die ashore. Oh, this is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. Drinks. Sings. The master, the swabber, the boatswain, and I, the gunner, and his mate. Love Mar, Meg, and Marion, and Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate. For she had a tongue with a tang, would cry to a sailor, go hang! She loved not the savour or tar, of tar or nor pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her wherever she did itch. Then to sea, boys, and let her go hang! This is a scurvy tune too, but here's my comfort. Drinks. Do not torment me. Oh! What? What's the matter? Have we devils here? Do you put a trips upon ponders with savages and men of India? I have not escaped uh, drowning to be afraid now of your four legs. For it hath been said, as, as proper a man as ever want on four legs cannot make him give ground. And it shall be said so again while Stefano breathes as nostrils. The spirits torment me. Oh! This is some monster of the isle with four legs, who hath got, I take it, an ague. Where the devil shall he learn our language? I will give him some relief, if it be but for that. If I can recover him and keep him tame and get to Naples with him, here's a present for any emperor that ever trod on Neat's leather. Do not torment me, pretty. I'll bring my wood home faster. Ah, he's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste my, of my bottle. If he have never drunk wine afore, he will, he will go near to remove his fit. If, if I can recover him and keep him tame, I will not take too much for him. He shall pay for him that have him, and that soundly. Thou hast, thou dost me yet, but little hurt thou wilt anon. I know it by thy trembling. Now Prospero, Prosper works upon thee. Come on your ways, open your mouth. Here is that which will give you give language to you. Cat, oh, open your mouth. This will shake your shaking. I can tell you and that soundly, you cannot tell who's your friend. Open your chaps again. Sorry. Sorry, I pressed the space bar and now I lost my spot. I should know that voice. It should be, but he is drowned. And these are devils. Oh, defend me. Four legs and, and two voices. A most delicate monster. His forward voice uh, now is to speak well of his friend. His backward voice is to utter foul speeches and to detract. Why, in my bottle will cover him. I will help his ague. Come, amen. I will support some in thy other mouth. Stefano! Doth the other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy. This is a devil and no monster. I will leave him. I... I have no long spoon. Stefano, if thou be Stefano, touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Be not afraid, thy good friend Trinculo. If 
the outbeat Triculo, uh, come forth. I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. If any be Triculo legs, these are they. Thou, thou shalt very Triculo indeed. How canst thou to the siege of this moon calf? Can he vent Triculo? I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke. But art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope now thou art not drowned. Is the storm overblown? I hit me under the dead moon's calf, Germadine, for fear of the storm. And art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, two Neapolitans escaped. Prithee, do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. Aside. These, these be fine things, and if they be not sprites, that's a brave god and bears celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How did thou escape? How camest thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I, I escaped upon a butt of sack which the sailors heaved overboard by this bottle, which I made of the bark of a tree with my own hands since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not earthly. Here, swear then how thou escapest. Swum ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Here, kiss the book. Thou, thou canst swim like a duck. Thou art made like a goose. Oh, Stefano, hast any more of this? The whole butt, man. My, my cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, Mooncalf? How does the, thine adieu? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee, I was a man in the moon when the time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee in thy dog in thy bush. Come swear to that. Kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents, I swear. By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have heard of him. A very weak monster. The man in the moon, <laughs> a most credulous monster. Well drawn, monster, in good sooth. I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island, and I will kiss thy foot, I prithee, be my god. By this light, a most perfidious and drunken monster. When God's asleep, he'll rob his bottle. I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself thy subject. Come on down, then, and, and swear. I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster. A most scurvy monster. I could not find it in my heart to beat him. Come kiss. But that the poor monster's in drink, an abominable monster. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. A most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. <laughs> I prithee, let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I with my long nails will dig thee pig nuts, show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset, and I'll bring thee to clustering filberts, and sometimes I'll get thee young scavels from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? I prithee now lead the way without any more talking, Triculo. The king and all our comp companions, 
the king and all our company are, are be else being drowned, we will inherit here. Here, bear my bottle, fellow Tricky and Trinculo. We'll fill him by and by again. Farewell, master, farewell, farewell. A howling monster, a drunken monster. No more dams I'll make for fish, nor fetch and firing at requiring, nor skip trencher, nor wash dish. Ban, ban, cacal, ban, has a new master, got a new man. Freedom, hey day, hey day, freedom, freedom, hey day, freedom. Oh, brave monster, lead the way. Exit. Scene one, before Prospero's cell. Enter Ferdinand bearing a log. There be some sports are painful, and their labor delights, delight in them sets off. Some kind of baseness are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point to rich ends. This, my mean task, would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's crabbed, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness had never like executor. I forget. But, but, but these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labors, most busy lest when I do it. Enter Miranda and Prospero at a distance unseen. Alas, now pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up those logs that you are, are enjoined to pile. Pray set it down and rest you. When this burns, twill weep for having wearied you. My father is hard at study. Pray now rest yourself, he's safe for these three hours. Oh, my dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray give me that. I'll carry it to the pile. No, no, precious creature. I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should dishonor, such dishonor undergo, while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my good will is to it, and yours it is against. Poor worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look warily. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me when you are by a night. I do beseech you chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broke your hest to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration, worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady, full many a lady I have eyed with best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women, never any with such so, so, with so fun soul, but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. But you, oh, you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face remember, save from my glass mine own. Nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad. I am skillless of, but by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any compilation, any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of. But I prattle something too wildly in my father's precepts I therein do forget. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a, a king. I would not so and would not and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow in my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did my heart fly to your service. 
there resides, to make me slave to it. And for your sake am I this patient log man. Do you love me? Oh, heaven. O oh, earth, bear witness to this sound and crown what I profess with kind event if I speak truth. If hollowly invert what best is my body to what what is boded me to mischief. I beyond all limit of what else in the world do love, prize, and honor you. I am a fool to weep at what I am glad of. Oh, fair encounter of two most rare affections. Heavens rain grace on that which breeds between them. Wherefore weep you? At mine unworthiness that dare not offer what I desire to give and much less take what I shall die to want. But this is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself. The bigger bulk it shows, hence bashful cunning, and prompt me plain and holy innocence. I am your wife if you will marry me. If not, I'll die your maid to be your fellow. You may deny me, but I'll be your servant whether you will or no. My mistress, dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband then? I, with a heart as willing as bondage or of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it. And now, farewell, till half an hour hence. A thousand thousand. Exant Ferdinand and Miranda severally. So glad of this is they I cannot be. Who are surprised with all. But my rejoicing at nothing can be more. All to my book. For yet ere supper time must I perform much business appertaining. Exit. Scene two, another part of the island. Enter Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo. So not me. When the butt is out, we would drink water, not a drop before. Therefore, bear up and boredom. Servant monster, drink to me. Servant monster, the folly of this island. They say there's but five upon this island. We are three of them. If the other two be brained like us, the state totters. <laughs> Drink, servant monster, when I bid thee, thy eyes are almost set in thy head. Where else should they be set? He were a brave monster indeed, if thy were set in his tail. <laughs> my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack. For my part, the sea cannot drown me. I swam ere I could recover the shore five and thirty leagues off and on. By this light, thou shalt be my lieutenant, monster or my standard. Your lieutenant, if you list. He's no standard. <laughs> Will not run, monsieur, monsieur, monster. Nor go neither, but you lie like dogs and yet say nothing neither. Mooncalf, speak once in thy life if thou beest a good mooncalf. How does thy honor? Let me lick thy shoe. I'll not serve him. He's not valiant. Thou liest, most ignorant monster. I am in case to jostle a constable. Why thou be debauched fish, thou? And was there ever a man coward that hath drunk so much sack as I today? Wilt thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half fish and half a monster? No, how he mocks me! Wilt thou let him, my lord? Lord, quoth he, that a monster should be such a natural. No, no, again, bite him to death, I pretty. Thank you, Lord. Keep a good tongue in your head. If you, if you prove a mutineer, then the next tree. 
the poor monster's my subject, and, and he shall not suffer indignity. I thank my noble lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? <laughs> Mary, will I kneel and repeat it? I, I will stand, and so will Trinculo. Enter Ariel, invisible. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey. Thou, I would, my valiant master would destroy thee. I do not lie. Trinculo, if you trouble him any more into his tell, by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. Why, I said nothing. Mum, then, and no more. Proceed. I say, by sorcery he got this isle. From me he got it. If thy greatness will revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayst knock a nail into his head. Thou liest, thou canst not. What a pine is this? Thou scurvy patch, I do beseech thy greatness. Give him blows, and take his bottle from him when he's when that's gone, he shall drink naught but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, run in no further into danger. Interrupt the monster one word further, and by this hand, I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stockfish out of thee. Why, what did I? I did nothing. Did oh, thou say of... Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take thou that. Eat trickler. As you like this, give me the lie another time. I did not give the lie. Out! Out of your wits and bearing you! A pox on your bottle! This sack and then drinking do a moraine on your monster, and the devil take your fingers. <laughs> now, now forward with your tail, pretty. Stand further off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stand further. Come, proceed. Why, as I told thee, it is a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him. Having first seized his book, sir, with alarm, batter his skull, or paunch him with a stake, or cut his wizen with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he's but as sot as I am, nor hath not one spirit spirit to command. They all do hate him as I rootedly as I. Burn but his books. He has brave utensils for, so he calls them, which when he has a house, he'll deck with all and that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a non pariah. I never saw a woman, but only Sycorax, my dam and she. But she is far surpassed Sycorax. Sycorax as great does least. Is it so brave, alas? Oh, ay, Lord. She will become thy bed, I warrant, and bring thee forth brave food. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen, save our graces, and Trinculo and myself, thyself, shall be viceroys. Dost thou like this plot, Trinculo, Trinculo? Excellent. Give me thy hand. I, I am sorry I beat thee, but whilst thou livest, keep a good tongue in thy head. With 
Within this half hour will he be asleep. Will that, will, will thou destroy him then? I, on my honor. This will I tell my master. Oh, thou makest me merry. I'm full of pleasure. Let us be jocund. Will you throw the catch? You taught me but while ere. As I, as I request, Mr. I will do reason. Any reason. Come on, Trinculo. Let us sing. Thanks. Floutum, stoutum, and stoutum, and a floutum, thought is free. <laughs> That's not the tune. Ariel plays the tune on a tabor and a pipe. What? What is the same? This is the tune of our catch, played by the picture of nobody. If thou beest a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou beest the devil, take thou thou this. Oh, forgive me my sins. He that pay, dies pays all debts. I defy thee. Mercy upon us. Art thou feared? Uh, no, monster, not I. Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about my ears, and sometimes voices that if I then had waked after long sleep, make me sleep again. And then in dreaming, the clouds methought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me that when I waked, I cried to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me, where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. That shall be by and by. I remember the story. The sound is going away. Let's follow it, and after do our work. Lead, monster, we'll follow. I would, I could see this tabua he lays it on. Wilt come? I'll follow, Stefano. Exon. Scene three, another part of the island. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Adrian, Francisco, and others. By your lacking, I can go no further, sir. My old bones ache. Here a maze trod indeed through forthrights and meanders. By your patience, I needs must rest me. O oh Lord, I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached, Rebirius, to the delig of my spirits. Sit down and rest, even here I will put off my hope and keep it no longer for thy flatterer. For he is drowned, whom thus we stray to find, but the sea mocks our frustrate such on search on land. We'll let him go. Aside to Sebastian. I am right glad that he's so out of hope. Do not for one repulse forego the purpose that you so resolved to effect. The next Aside to Antonia. The next advantage will we take the relief. Aside to Sebastian. Let it be tonight, for now they are oppressed with travel, they will not or cannot use such vigilance as when they are fresh. Aside to Antonio. I say tonight, no more. What harmony, what harmony is this, my good friends? Hark. Ah, oh, marvelous, sweet music. Enter Prospero above, invisible. Enter several strange shapes, bringing in a banquet. They dance about in the gentle actions and salutations. And inviting the king and and see to eat, they depart. Give us kind keepers, heavens, what were these? A living drollery. Now I will believe that there are unicorns, that in Arabia there is one tree, the phoenix throne, one phoenix at this hour reigning there. I'll believe both. And what does else want credit come to me? And I'll be sworn tis true. Travelers ne'er did lie, though. Fools at home condemn them. If in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? If I should say I saw such islanders, 
for certes these people are of the island, who, though they are of monstrous shape, yet note their manners are more gentle kind than any of our human generation you shall find many, nay, almost any. Aside. Honest Lord, thou hast said well, for some of you there present are worse than devils. Huh. I cannot too much muse such shapes, such gesture and such sound expressing. All they want to use of tongue, a kind of excellent dumb discourse. Aside. Praise in departing. They vanish strangely. No matter, since they have left their viands behind, for we have stomachs. Will it please you taste of what is here? Not I. Faith, sir, you need not fear. When we were boys, who would believe that there were mountaineers, dude-lapped like bulls, whose throats had hanging at them wallets of flesh, or that there were such men whose heads stood in their breast, which now we find each putter out of five for one will bring us good warrant of. I will stand to feed, although my last no matter, since I feel the best is past. Brother, my lord, the duke, stand to, and do as we. Thunder and lightning. Enter Ariel like a harpy. Claps his wings upon the table, and with a quick device, the banquet vanishes. You are three men of sin, whom destiny that hath no instrument this lower world, and what it isn't, the never surfeited sea hath caused to belch up you, and on this island, where man doth not inhabit, you, amongst men, being most unfit to live, I have made you mad. And even with such like valor, men hang and drown their proper selves. Alonzo, oh. Sebastian, and all draw their swords. You fools! I and my fellows are ministers of fate, the elements of whom your swords are tempered, may as well wound the loud winds, or with bemocked at stabs, kill the still-closing waters as diminish one dowel that's in my plume. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you could hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strengths and will not be uplifted. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospero, exposed unto the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child, for which foul deed the powers delaying, not forgetting, have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. Thee of thy son, Alonso, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering perdition, worse than any death, can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways, whose wraths to guard you from, which here, in this most desolate isle, else falls upon your heads, is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing. He vanishes in thunder, then to soft music enter the shapes again, and dance with mocks and mows, and carrying out the table. Bravely, the figure of this harpy has done hast thou performed my Ariel, a grace it had devouring. Of my instruction hast thou nothing baited in what thou hast had to say. So with good life and observation strange, my meaner ministers their several kinds have done. My high charms work, and these mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They are now in my power. And in these fits I leave them, while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine love, darling. In the name of the something bus. holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous. He thought the billows spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder that deep and dreadful organ pipe pronounced the name of Prosper. It did bass my tre trespass. Therefore, my son, I the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than air plummet sounded, 
And with him there lie mudded. Exit. But one fiend at a time, I'll fight their legions o'er. I'll be thy second. Exant Sebastian and Antonio. All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt, like poison given to work at a great time after, now gins to bite the spirits. I do beseech you that are of suppler joints, follow them swiftly and hinder them from what this ecstasy may now provoke them to. Follow, I pray you. Or scene one, before Prospero's cell, enter Prospero, Ferdinand, and Miranda. If I have too austerely punished you, for your compensation makes amends. For I have given you here a third of my own life, or that for which I live, but once again I tender to thy hand. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test here. Afore heaven I ratify this my rich gift. Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast her off, for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it against an oracle. Then, as my gift and thine own acquisition, worthily purchase, take my daughter. But if thou dost break her virgin not before all sanctimonious ceremonies may with full and holy rite be ministered, no sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow. But barren hate, sour eye disdain, and discord shall bestrew the unions of your bed with weeds so loathly that you shall hate it both. Therefore, take heed, as Hyman's lamp shall light you. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue and long life, with such love as tis now the murkiest den, the most opportune place, the strongest suggestion, or worse or genius can, shall never melt mine honor unto lust to take away the edge of that day's celebration when I shall think, or Phoebus's steeds are floundered or night kept chained below. <sighs> Fairly spoke. Sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. Ah, oh, what Ariel, my industrious servant, Ariel. Enter what would Ariel. Potent, master? Here I am. Thou and thy meaner fellows your last service did worthily perform, and I must use you in such another trick. Go, bring the rabble, or whom I give thee power. Here to this place, incite them to quick motion, for I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently? I, with a twink. Before you can say come and go, and breathe twice and cry so-so, each one tripping on his toe will be here with mop and mow. Do you love me, master? No. <sighs> Dearly, my delicate Ariel, do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well, I conceive. Exit. <sighs> Look, thou be true. Do not give dalliance too much the rein. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire in the blood. Be more abstemious, or else good night your vow. I warrant you, sir. The white cold virgin snow upon my heart abates the ardor of my liver. <sighs> well, <sighs> now come, my Ariel. Bring a colliery rather than want a spirit. Appear and pertly. No tongue, all eyes. Be silent. Soft music, enter Iris. Ceres, most bounteous lady, thy rich lees of wheat, rye, barley, vetches, oats, and peas, thy turfy mountains where live nibbling sheep, and flat meads thatched with stover them to keep, thy banks with peoned and tw twilled brims, which spongy aerial at any hest at thy hest betrims. To make cold nymphs chaste crowns, and thy broom groves, whose shadow the dismissed bachelor loves, being last lorn thy pole-clipped vineyard, and thy sea marge sterile and rocky hard, 
where thou thyself dost err, the queen of the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I, bids thee leave these, and with her sovereign grace, here on this grass plot, in this very place, to come and sport. Her peacocks fly amain, approach, rich Ceres, her to entertain. Enter Ceres. Hail, many-colored messenger that never doth disobey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon my flower diffusest honey drops, refreshing shower, and with each end of thy blue bow dost crown my bosky acres and my unshrubbed down, rich scoff to my proud earth. Why hath thy queen summoned me hither to this short grassed green? A contract of true love to celebrate and some donation freely to a state on the blessed lovers. Tell me, heavenly bow, if Venus or her son, as thou dost know, do now attend the queen? Since I did plot the means thy dusky dis my daughter got, her and her blind boy scandaled company I have forsworn. Of her society, be not afraid. I met her deity cutting the clouds toward Paphos and her son dove drawn with her. Here thought they to have done the, some wanton charm upon this man and maid, whose vows are that no bed right shall be paid till Hymen's torch be lighted. But vain, Mars's hot minion is returned again. Her waspish headed son has broke his arrows, swears he will shoot no more but play with sparrows and be a boy right out. Highest queen of state, great Juno comes. I know her by her gait. Enter Juno. How does my bounteous sister go with me to bless this twain, that they may prosperous be and honored in their issue? They sing. Honor, riches, marriage, blessing, long continuance and increasing. Our early joys be still upon you. Juno sings her blessings upon you. <laughs> Earths increase, boys in plenty, barns and garners never empty, vines in clustering bunches growing, plants with goodly burthen bowing. Spring come to you at the farthest in the very end of harvest. Sanctity and want shall shun you. Circe's blessing is so on you. This is a most majestic vision and harmoniously charmingly May I be bold to think these spirits? <laughs> spirits, which by mine art I have from their confines called to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever. So rare a wondered father and, and a wife makes this place paradise. Juno and Ceres whisper and send Iris on employment. <sighs> Sweet. Now silence. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously, there's something else to do, hush and be mute, or else our spell is marred. You nymphs called naiads of the wandering brooks, with your sedged crowns and ever harmless looks, leave your crisp channels and on this green land answer your summons, Juno does command. Come temperate nymphs and help to celebrate, a contract of true love be not too late. Enter certain nymphs. You sunburnt sicklemen of August weary, come hither from the furrow and be merry. Make holiday, your rye straw hats put on, and these fresh nymphs encounter every one in country footing. Enter certain reapers, properly habited. They join with the nymphs in a grapesful dance towards the end whereof Prospero starts suddenly and speaks, after which, to a strange hollow and confused noise, they heavily vanish. I had forgot the foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. To the spirits. Uh, uh, well done. Avoid. No more. This is strange. Your father's in some passion that works him strongly. Never till this day saw I him touched with anger so distempered. <laughs> you... Do look, my son, in a uh, move, sort of, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our, our revels are now ended. 
These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the, the cloud capped towers, the uh, gorgeous palaces, the uh, solemn temples, a uh, great globe itself, yea, all which in, it inherit shall, shall dissolve and like this insubstantial pageant faded leave not a wreck behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. <clears throat> Sir, I am vexed. Bear not my weakness. My brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity, if you please. Retire into my cell and there repose. A, a, a turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mind. We wish you peace. We wish you peace. Thanks, James. Come with a thought, I thank thee, Ariel, come. Enter Ariel. Thy thoughts I cleave to, what's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. Aye, my commander. When I presented Ceres, I thought to have told thee of it, but I feared lest I might anger thee. <sighs> Say again, where didst thou leave these varlets? I told you, sir, they were red hot with drinking. So fun of valor that they smote the air for breathing in their faces, beat the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending towards their project. Then I beat my tabor, at which, like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, lifted up their noses as they smelt music. So I charmed their ears, that calf-like they my lowing followed through, tooth briars, sharp furzes, pricking goss and thorns, which entered their frail shins. At last I left them in the filthy, mantled pool beyond your cell. They are dancing up to the chins that the foul lake or stunk their feet. <sighs> This well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retain thou still. The trumpery in my house, go, bring it hither for stale to catch these thieves. I go, I go. Exit. A devil, a born devil on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains humanly taken, all, all lost, quite lost. And as with age his body uglier grows, so his mind cankers. I will plague them all, even to roaring. Re enter Ariel, loaden with glistening apparel, etc. <sighs> Come, hang them on this line. Prospero and Ariel remain invisible. Enter Caliban, Stefano, Trinculo, all the way. Pray you, tread softly that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. We are now near his cell. Monster, your fairy, which you, you say is a harmless fairy, has, has done little better than play the jack with us. Monster, I do smell all horse piss, at which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, Monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look you. Thou art but a lost monster. Good my lord, give me thy favor still. Be patient, for the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore speak softly. All's hushed as midnight yet. Ay, but to lose our bottles in the pool. <laughs> There is not only disgrace and dishonor in that, monster, but an infinite loss. There's more to me than my wetting. Yes, this is your harmless fairy monster. I will fit off my bottle, though I be your ears for my labor. Pretty, my king, be quiet. Seest thou here? This is the mouth of the cell no noise and enter. Do that good mischief which may make this island thine own forever, and I, thy Caliban, fry thy foot liquor. Give me thy hand. I, I do begin to have bloody thoughts. 
Oh, King Stefano, oh, peer, oh, worthy Stefano, look what a wardrobe here is for thee. Let it alone, thou fool, it is but trash. Oh, but, oh, monster, we know it belongs to a frippery. Oh, King Stefano! Put off that gown, Trinculo. By this hand, I'll have that gown. Thy grace shall have it. The drops he drowned this fool. I, what do you mean to dope thus on such baggage? Let's alone and do the murder first. If he awake from toe to crown, he'll fill our skins with pinches. Make us strange stuff. Be you quiet, monster. Mistress Lyne, is this not my jerking? Now is the jerking under the line. Now, Jerkin, you are like to lose your hair and prove a bold, Jerkin. Do, do. We steal by line and level, aren't like your grace. I thank thee for that jest. Here's a garment for thee. Wit shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Steal by line and level is an excellent pass of pate. There's another garment for thee. Monster, come, put on some lime upon your fingers, and away with the rest. I will have none, aunt. We shall lose our time, uh, and all be turned to barnacles, or to apes, with foreheads living is slow. Monster, lay to your fingers. Help to beat this away where my hogshead of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to, carry this. And this. Aye, and this. A noise of hunters heard. Enter divers spirits in shapes of dogs and hounds and hunt them about, Prospero and Ariel setting them on. Hey, hey, mountain, hey. Silver, aye, there it goes, silver. Fury, fury, oh, there, carry there, hark, hark. Caliban, Stefano, and Trinkolo are driven out. Go, charge my goblins that they grind their joints with dry convulsions, shorten up their sinews with aged cramps, and more pinch-spotted make them than part or cat in a mountain. Hark, they roar. Now yeah, well, let them be hunted soundly. At this hour lie at my mercy, all mine enemies. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air of freedom. For a little, follow and do me service. Exeunt. End of Act Four. Act Five, Scene One. Before Prospero's cell. Enter Prospero in his magic robes and Ariel. Now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not. My spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the, how's the day? On the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so, when first I raised a tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as you left them, all prisoners, sir, in the lime grove, which weather fends your cell, they cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, and the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay, but chiefly him that you termed, sir, the good old Lord Gonzalo. His tears run down his beard like winter's drops from, from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works him that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. Hast thou which art aught but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind that relish all as sharply, passions as they be kindlier moved than thou art? Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason, Against my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, 
The soul shall, soul drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go. Release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Exit. <sighs> ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes and groves, and ye that on sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune, and do fly him when he comes back. You demi puppets that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make, where of the hues not bites. And you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms, that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun. Call forth the mutinous winds and twixt the green sea and azure vaults at roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong base promontory have I made shake and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oaked and led them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjure. And when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do to work mine end upon their senses, that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Solemn music. Re enter Ariel before, then Alonzo with a frantic gesture attended by Gonzalo, Sebastian, and Antonio, in like manner, attended by Adrian and Francisco, they all enter the circle which Prospero has made, and there stand charmed, which Prospero, observing, speaks. A solemn air and the best comforter to an unsettled fancy cure thy brains, now useless boil within thy skull. There stand, for all our spells stopped. Holy Gonzalo, Gonzalo, Honorable man, mine eyes, ever sociable to the show of thine, fall fellowy drops. The charm dissolves apace, and as the morning steals upon the night, melting the darkness, so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle their clearer reason. Oh, good Gonzalo, my true preserver, and a loyal sir to him you false, I will pay thy graces home both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonzo, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a further in the act that art pinched for it now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood, you brother mine, that entertained ambition, expelled remorse in nature. Who would Sebastian, whose inward pinches therefore are most strong, would here have killed your king? I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell, and the approaching tide will shortly fill their reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me, Ariel. Fetch me the hat and rapier in myself. I will discase me and myself present as I was sometime Milan. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. Where the bee sucks, there suck I. In a cowslip bell I lie, there I couch when owls do cry, there couch when owls do cry. On at the back but I do fly, and if there's someone, summer merrily, merrily, merrily shall I live now into the blossom that hangs on the bough. Why, that's my dainty Ariel, I shall miss thee, but yet thou shalt have freedom. So, so, so. To the kingship, invisible as thou art, thou shalt find the mariner's sleep. And under the hatches, the master and boats, when being awake, enforce them to this place. And presently, I pray thee. I drink the air before me and return, or ere your pulse twice beats. Exit. All torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement inhabits here. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, the wronged Duke of Milan, Prospero. 
for most assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee. I embrace thy body and to thee and thy company I bid a hearty welcome. Whether thou best he or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late I have been, I do not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends, with which I fear of madness held me. Held me. This must crave, and if this be at all the most strange story, thy dukedom I resign, and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living, and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends all. Aside to Sebastian and Antonio. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded, I here could pluck his highness' frow upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in him. No, for you, most wicked sir, whom the cold brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest faults, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which per perforce I know thou must restore. If thou best prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How hast met us here, who three hours hence were wrecked upon the shore where I have lost? How sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear friend Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss, and patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her help, of whose soft grace for the lank loss I have her sovereign aid and rest myself content. You like loss? As great to me as late, and supportable to make the dear loss, have I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh, heavens, that they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there, that they were, I wish myself were muddled in the oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? Oh, in the last tempest. I perceive these lords, as this encounter, do so much admire that they devour their reason and scarce think their eyes do offices of truth. Their words are natural breath. But, howsoever you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke which was thrust forth of Milan, who's most strangely upon this drawer where you were wrecked, was landed to be lord on it. But uh, no more yet of this, for tis a chronicle of day by day, not a relation for a breakfast snor befitting this first meeting. Welcome, sir. This sells my court. Here I have a few attendants, subjects none abroad. Uh, pray you look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with a, as good a thing and let bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. Here Prospero discovers Ferdinand and Miranda playing at chess. Sweet Lord, you play me false. Uh, no, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms to wrangle, and I would call it fair play. Uh, if, if this prove a vision of the island, dear, one dear son shall I twice lose. Most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I, I, I have cursed them without cause. Kneels. Now all the blessings of a glad father encompass thee about. Arise and say how thou comest here. Oh, wonder, how many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is, O oh, brave new world that has such people in it. Uh, Tis new to thee. But is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Your eldest acquaintance cannot be three hours. She is the goddess that has served us and brought us 
us together. Sir, she is mortal, but by, but by immortal providence, she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I have heard renowned, but never saw before, of whom I have received the second life and second father this lady makes him to me. I am hers, but oh, how oddly will it sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. <laughs> there, sir, stop. Let us not burthen our remembrance with a, with a heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept or should have spoke ere this. Look down, you God, and on this couple drop a blessed crown, for it is you that have chalked forth the way which brought this hither. I say amen, Gonzalo. Was Milan thrust from Milan that his issue should become king of Naples? Rejoice beyond a common joy and set it down with gold on lasting pillars. In one voyage did Clarabelle, her husband, find a Tunis, and Ferdinand, his brother, found a wife where he himself was lost, Prospero, his dukedom, in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves when no man was his own. To Ferdinand and Miranda. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that does not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Re-enter Ariel with the master and bosun amazingly, amazedly following. Oh, look, sir, look, sir. Here is more of us. I prophesy if a gallows were on land, this fellow could not drown. Now blasphemy that swears grace or board, not an oath on shore. Hast thou no mouth by land? What is the news? The best news is that we have safely found our king and company, the next our ship, which but three glasses since we have our split, is tight and yare and bravely rigged as when we first put out to sea. Aside to Prospero. Sir, all this service have I done since I went. Aside to Ariel. Ah, oh, my tricksy spirit. These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, how come you, Hither? If I did not think, sir, I were well awake, I'd strive to tell you. We were dead of sleep, and how we know not, all clapped under hatches, where but what even now, with strange and several noises of ro roaring, shrieking, howling, jingling chains, and more diversity of sounds, all horrible, we were awakened straight away at liberty, where we, in all her trim, freshly beheld our royal gold, gold and gallant ship, our master capering to eye her, and he trice so please you, even in a dream, were we divided from them, and we were brought moping hither. Aside to Prospero. Was well done. Aside to Ariel. Ah, oh, bravely, my diligence. Thou shalt be free. This is a Strange amaze as ever men trod, and there is in this business more than nature. Whatever conduct of some oracle must ratify, rectify our knowledge. <laughs> Sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. I pick leisure, which shall be shortly. Single, I'll resolve you, which to you shall seem probable of everything that's happened to accidents. Till when, be cheerful and think of each thing well. Side to Ariel. Come hither, spirit. Set Caliban and his companions free. Untie the spell. Exit Ariel. How fares, my gracious sir? There are yet missing of your company some few odd lads that you remember not. Re-enter Ariel, driving in Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo in their stolen apparel. Every man shift for all the rest, and let no man take care for himself, for all his but fortune. Coraggio, bully monster, coraggio. If these be true spies which I wear in my head, here's a goodly sight. Oh, Satibus, these be brave spirits indeed. 
how fine my master is. I am afraid he will chastise me. <laughs> what things are these, my lord Antonio? Will money buy them? Uh, sorry about that. Very like one of them is a plain fish and no doubt marketable. Mark but the badges of these men, my lords, and say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong that could control the moon, make flows and ebbs, and deal in her command without her power. These three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, for he's a bastard one, had plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own. This thing of darkness acknowledge mine. I shall be pitched to death. Is this not Stefano, my drunken brother? <sighs> He's drunk now. Where had he wine? And Trinkolo is ripe and is reeling ripe. Where should they find this grand looker liquor that hath guided them? And how canst thou in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last that I fear me will never come out of my bone. I shall not fear fly bowing. <laughs> Why, how now, Stefano? Oh, touch me not. I'm not Stefano, but a cramp. <sighs> You'll be king of the Isle, Sirrah? Oh, I should have been a sore one then. This is a strange thing as e'er I looked on. Pointing to Caliban. He is as disproportionate in his manners as in his shape. Go, Sirrah, to my cell. Take with you your companions as you look to have my pardon. Trim it handsomely. Aye, that I will. And I'll be wise hereafter and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. Go to. Away. Hence, and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or stole it, rather. Exit Caliban, Stefano, and Trinquilo. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest this one night, which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as I not doubt shall make it go quick away. The story of my life and the particular accents gone by since I came to this isle. And in the morn, I'll bring you to your ships, and so to Naples, where I have hoped to see the nuptial of these our dear beloved Solomon eyes, and then retire me to Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take ear strangely. I'll deliver all, and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sail so expeditious. Thou shalt catch your royal fleet far off. Aside to Ariel. My Ariel, chick, that is thy charge. Then the elements be free and fare thou well. Please you draw near. Exit. Now my charms are all overthrown. And what strength I have's my own, which is most faint. Now it is true I must here confide by you or send here be confined by you or sent to Naples. Oh, let me not, since I have my dukedom got and pardoned the deceiver. Uh, dwell in this bare island by your spell, but release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours, yours my sails must spill, or else my project fails. Which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayers, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all for faults. As from your chimes would pardon be, let your indulgence set me free. Thus concludes William Shakespeare's The Tempest. We, the Zoom players, have been oh reading at five stage directions and playing Juno, Taryn Elizabeth Gray.
Reading Act 4, Stage Directions, Elon Sofer. Act 3, Stage Directions, and Boats Master, Marissa Gore. Reading Act 5, Two Stage Directions, and playing Boatswain, Erica Soto. Act 1, Stage Directions, Francisco and Iris was played by Dana Moore. Playing Trinculo, Adrian, Ceres, and the Mariners, Ari Spence. Stefano was played by Simon Shannon. Gonzalo, played by Hannah Corrigan. Antonio, played by Sam Negan. Sebastian, Nick Napo. Alonzo, James Heisey. Ferdinand, Nate Brown. Caliban, Bruce Crilly. Ariel was played by Ashley Wool. Miranda, Meredith Yanuzzi. And playing Prospero, Kevin Vizlowski. I have been Michael Serpy. We are the Zoom players. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Good night.